What's going on guys and welcome back to Wild Comics. So I'm going to show you guys my process of pressing and cleaning a comic book. Um, it's going to be probably an extensive video. So if you look right here, I'm going to post all the times that you can skip to as far as uh, the equipment I use, the cleaning process, um, and, and the pressing and time process. So to my right, your left, will be all the times you can just skip to the video and check it out. So stay tuned, watch the whole video, remember to hit the subscribe button and the like button, and keep following along. Welcome back guys, welcome back to WOW Comics. So today I'm gonna to show you guys how I clean and press all my comic books. So typically CGC does do cleaning and there's some other outsources that you can go to locally, LCSs, um, that can do it for you. And I wanna say they range anywhere between, you know, eight to $15. I wanna say CGC charges uh, $12 a book. Um, don't quote me on that, I could be wrong. This could be cringeworthy for a lot of people. So if I get a lot of uh, hate comments, I, I, I get it. Everyone has their own way, their own techniques of doing things. This is my personal way of doing it. Um, it seems to be very effective. So um, yeah, so why don't you guys stay tuned. So the, actually real quick, the book we're doing today is gonna be this one. I picked this one up at a um, little vintage store here around town and uh, it's, it's pretty hammered. So what we'll do is we'll clean this book together. I'll show you guys the process of cleaning it and pressing it. Uh, the equipment I use, the material I use, and everything else in between so you guys have an idea of um kind of how it's done so stay tuned i'm gonna flip the camera around and uh you guys can check it out okay now that i've taken the time to flip the camera around you guys will have a better idea of a top view of the comic so what we're doing today is uh venom lethal protector number four so first appearance of scream first thing always make sure your hands are clean so anytime you're pressing or cleaning um cgc will ding you for um finger marks, oil rubs, and all that kind of stuff. So the last thing you want is to go through the whole cleaning process then put it back, you know, bag and board, and then have a smudge on your finger and then get dinged for it, right? Uh, potential half a grade or whatnot. So um, let me go ahead and pick it up and you know, I'll kind of do a slower, you can see all that dirt. See all the dirt, it's all around the book. Like to me, this is, this is kind of a minor key right first appearance of scream she's she's pretty legit um she may make an mcu debut who knows um there is a small spine roll on it i don't know if you guys will be able to see it or not maybe if i go like this let me try see if you guys can see the small spine roll that the uh the press will actually take out i don't know if you'll be able to see it i'll do another i'll do an actual pan of the book also um before i do the actual pressing process so that's kind of the whole um dirtiness of the book you know when you're cleaning and pressing you really want to stay off of the actual um color itself and we'll i'll show you the proper way of kind of cleaning the color you know per my my um way of doing it so you can kind of see there's a few let's see if the camera can zoom in real quick and kind of you can see the com some of the spine ticks that are inside of the camera itself or inside the comic book itself so couple spine ticks if it breaks color unfortunately the press will not take it out um but the surprisingly enough it can take out quite a bit of all that okay so let's get to cleaning so i use three things the first thing i'll use is an eraser like this right that's the first one i use i'll even use something like this that you put on top of a pencil and then the last thing i'll use is a few cotton balls right so typically what I like to do is I like to start with the back first. And then what I do in the back is I just only really focus on all the white areas. So I'll take this little guy and I'll just kind of lightly go over all this. And what I'm kind of doing is I'm just trying to pick up the dirt um, and trying to clean it up a little bit, mainly in the whites, you know, so that way all the, all the whites kind of get cleaned up. They get addressed and whatnot. So I'll go through and I'll do the whole back and I'll go like this. And I'll just kind of clean it up. Then if I have any detailed ones, I'll come through and I'll just kind of like really finely detail it to where I can kind of get into like smaller areas with this guy, like so. 
And at the very end, I'll come through and I'll do a really good, really good like buff almost is what you want. I always go circular motions, but when I get to like corners, I'll kind of like flare it out like this. And then when I get to the spine, I'll go like this, right? So, uh, and, and again, I'm not, I know that it may look like I'm pressing down like this. I'm not, it's only on the balls of my fingers. So I'm only doing it on the, on the tips of my fingers on the book. And then remember the staples can, ca can catch on the actual cotton ball itself. So then I'll flip it over. And then again, I'll just really focus on these white areas. And I'll just kind of go through and I'll kind of hit all the white areas to where I can clean all this off. Right? And I'll kind of go through in between each of the colors like so around the arms again staying off of the colors this will this will take off color you can even see the dirt i don't know if you guys can see that or not but you can see the dirt it's already picking up off of the comic book and i always try to make sure i have a clean eraser so i just do like maybe a little a little square inch you know section like i've done and i'll go through and i'll flake it off don't to me this is a no-no right a lot of things can go wrong Take your cotton ball and lightly brush it off. And I try to brush it off even off of the, the, the back of board, the magazine back of board. So that way when I'm flipping the book back and forth, it's not getting pressed into the book and it's not causing book indentation or anything like that. So again, I go through, hit all these areas. Now you can kind of see it's getting a little funky right here because I'm getting kind of like in a, in a tighter spot. So I'll kind of come in with this guy. Again, this isn't a rush process, you guys. This is something to where um, if you really want to improve a grade and you really want to make a book, you know, jump a couple grades, you'll. Th this is this is where you got to slow down and take your time. You know, it's almost like painting. Painting part is the easy part. It's all the masking and prepping that that makes the job look good. Again, we take our cotton ball and we wipe it off. So then, once the whole book is done, right, and everything is completed. You're gonna to wanna to come back through and you're gonna to wanna to repeat that same, that same buffing process, right? So you kinda of come through and you wanna buff out any residual, any other the color. Again, I'm just kinda of doing this little area so you guys can see it. I'm not gonna to torture you and have you sit down and watch a 45 minute video of me cleaning this comic book. Um, so you just kinda of wanna go through and just kinda of buff it out. So just real quickly, I mean, you can kind of see, I don't know if you can see it, the cotton ball has already picked up some more dirt. And I'm going to zoom in on a dirty area. So you can kind of see how it's dirty still right there. But when you zoom up, it's already gotten way cleaner. Just, just, just on just that short amount of time. So I'm going to continue doing the whole book. I will show you um, the next step after I buff it and clean it. And then we'll go from there. I'll show you the, uh, the proper way of doing all the, you know, putting the boards in and everything and whatnot before pressing, and then we'll go to the presser. Okay, now we're ready to start moving with the pressing process. I haven't gone to the machine yet, but I'm going to show you the uh, materials that I use prior to that so you guys can kind of see what I use. So what I use is I use Reynolds Kitchen Parchment Paper. Now you can get pressing paper and everything on Amazon and everything else, parchment paper and everything else. To be honest, this is perfect. I, I think the stuff on Amazon is a little bit thicker because technically we want the heat to be able to kind of hit the book a little bit harder to kind of relax the pages and the press to be able to um, push the book and flatten the pages and everything. So this is, this is what I use. Um, any, obviously grocery store, you can get it at. So imagine we're on the press machine and this is a bird's eye view. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out a piece that's going to cover the whole platform of the press machine, All right? And that's going to go down first. And we'll, we'll, again, we'll go over this when we get to the press machine. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to take our book and we're going to flip it all the way to the middle to where the staples are at. Sometimes what you can do is you can even kind of see down the side to where the the actual staples are at rather than trying to flip through each individual page. Uh, this sometimes can take a little bit of time, but these pages are, here we go, we're almost there. I think we go one more. Nope, that's not it. Where's it at? 
Ah, here we go. So once we get to the middle pages, you want to go to where, I don't know if I'm able to show you or not, to where the staples are at. See, there's the staple there and the staple there. So this part is super, super important because inside the staples, they sometimes have a tendency of being raised up. And you gotta take, you gotta take, I use, I, 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 you can buy a package of these. These are, I'm sorry, these are actually magazine backer boards, okay? And this is what you want. You can actually tell, because the press, because I've, I've used this one a couple of times, you can see the line, it's really faint, you can see the line down there. I've used it, I normally use each parchment paper, each magazine board, and I use an, a regular backer board, and we'll get to that in a minute, about 10 times. After that, garbage, I throw it away. So, super important, you guys. You can actually see on this one, I don't know if you'll be able to see or not, you'll see two little niches, right there and right there. Those are staple indents, okay? So when you're putting this inside of your book, you have to remember, especially if those staples are indented up higher, they will actually, if, if, if this wasn't placed properly, those would be in your book. So you gotta be really cautious and really aware of these staples because they can they can come through the back of your book and they'll show and we're losing grades and we don't want to lose grades we want those nine eights if not tens right so we want to set it in there nice and gently so that it's right behind the staples and then we're going to close it okay and then what we're going to do is we're going to flip the book around so it's like this again imagine we're on the press machine and i like to take this finger and I'll push it in a little bit and you can't see my other finger but I'll, I'll push it in a little bit to where, at the same time to where I'm nice and snug. Again those staples are underneath this backer board so they don't protrude and indent the outside of this. Now as a secondary caution what you want to do is you take your, magazine, your um, comic backing right and you only want to do it I've seen other people do it different ways so well, they'll do it throughout I just go back past the back page. Whoops, doesn't want to be pressed apparently. I just take the back page and I'll take this and I'll slide it. Again, same process, nice and snug. I'm gonna push it like this and I'll even kind of pull it back a little bit to where I know I'm nice and tight. Cause what we're looking for is we're trying to raise this up just a little bit so that it has a nice clean, once it's pressed and all this garbage is out of it, the finished process, the book will lay nice and flat. It'll be a little bit raised here where the staples are at, where it's meant to be, and it'll lay nice and flat, right? So that way when the heat comes down, we're pressing on it, boom, we're on it, okay? Again, secondary precaution for the staples, right? And we wanna make sure that it's nice and flat, okay? Oh, another really super important. When you're putting this in, we all know there's like a rougher side and there's a smooth side, right? Smooth side always goes to the inside of the book. Do not, and I will repeat this, do not put this inside like this, okay? I mean, you can. I do not recommend it because what's going to happen when you press this book and that heat hits it, the ink is actually going to kind of loosen up a little bit and become a little sticky, and it has a tendency of sticking to this. So what will happen is, is the ink will transfer to this board. So when you look at it, you'll see that the ink has been pulled off of this page. On the rougher side, it kind of, it doesn't, it doesn't stick as easy because it's a little bit rougher. So always, always, and you, you'll see, I mean, the, look how dirty that is. That's just because it was on the back side like this, right? So imagine that being like that, it would pull all this and it doesn't affect this at all, at least from my, stance right so again rough side up smooth side to the inside of the book nice and flat okay now the last step you're going to do is you're going to take another piece of the parchment paper to the same length as the first piece and you're going to set it just like that okay so now what we have is we have pretty much like heat resistant cookie you know these are for the cookies and stuff right so that way it doesn't stick to the paper doesn't do anything else once this is down like this, we're ready to press. So now we can set our temperature, we can set our presser, we can set everything we can, and we can press this. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move to the press machine, 
and I'm going to show you guys exactly how to press a book off of the press machine and I'll show you the presser that I use. All right. So here's the press machine that I use. I've actually got it off of Amazon. I want to say it was about $299, but I want to say I got it on sale for like maybe $250, $220. The really cool thing about this one is it comes with multiple attachments, which I don't have here. You can do hats, you can do plates, you can do shirts. Um, obviously, I use this one strictly for comic books when I'm pressing comic books. Um, most importantly, what we have here is we have a, the, the, the one of the original pads. Now, it does come with another pad that you discard because it's too soft. This pad in general is nice and firm. Like this is this is the pad you want. The firmer of the two that it comes with, okay? Um, that will make sense if you get a pressing machine. So you'd wanna keep the firmer of the two. Um, the second step I do is I'll take two magazine boards or backers, make sure they're clean, right? And then what I'll do is I'll set those right on top of there. So then now what I'm doing is, is I'm allowing myself a nice firm bottom for the book for when it's pressed. If it's soft, then what's going to happen is going to get spiral, we're going to get all sorts of funkiness going on. We don't want that. That's a no-no. So we're going to leave that just like that, okay? Actually, what I should be doing is I should be turning this on, letting this warm up. Turn that on and we'll let that warm up. I'm showing you guys the process. And I'll get to the heat and time and everything in a minute. So we have all that set up like that. Second step you want to do, uh, yeah, second step you want to do is you want to go ahead and take your first layer of parchment paper, and you're going to want to lay it down so that it covers the full surface of the actual table itself, okay? So now we have full coverage of it. Second step we want to do, right, is we have our book that we've already pre-made, right? We have our magazine backer in the middle of the book. We have our comic backer behind the back page of the book, and we're going to slide it into place to where it's nice. I like to make it to where it's nice and level with the, with the magazine backers that are on it already, okay? That way it ensures me, hey, we're not falling off the edges, we're not too far forward, the press is going to hit it perfectly and do what we need it to do. So again, I double check to make sure that this one's all the way in, and I make sure that this one's all the way in. Don't go too hard because you'll rip you'll rip this page super easy if you if you're trying to force it. Second step is you're gonna put your last piece of parchment paper right on top. Okay. Now this book is ready to be pressed. So what we do here now is we set it into place and we make sure that we're nice and above the book. This has a tendency of wanting to swivel both ways for different attachments. So we want to make sure that. You know, we're right above the book this way and we're right above the book this way, right? So we'll, right there is right where I want to be. So we have that nice and set. So then what we want to do is we also want to make sure that our temperature, which is, is, is going up at the moment. I don't know if you can fully see it on the video or not, but it's at 125. Um, we got to, unfortunately with this machine particularly, it only goes as low as 200 degrees. Now... For anyone that presses books, we know that is hot, okay? So we wanna make sure that um, we dial in our time right and dial everything in properly based on the temperature um, of the press machine. Because if the press machine gets too hot, we can easily ruin the book if we overpress it. So um, I've been able to tinker with this and figure out the right pressing time, again, per my needs and per what I see results at, based on the 200 degree temperature of this machine. So once it reaches 200 degrees, um, we're gonna go ahead and set the time. We're going to go ahead and uh, let it kind of reset and balance. And then we're also going to show you, I'll show you right now what's warming up. So anytime you're pressing, don't like slam it down or slam it up. I see a lot of people do that when they're doing shirts or they're doing things baby it you know because you're going to break your press and these things aren't cheap and you're going to ruin your book so what you want to do is just what i'm doing is i'm lowering it right i'm just kind of letting the weight of it bring it down but i'm holding it with my left hand and just kind of guiding it down into place and then once it hits the book itself now i know it's not going to go anywhere other than down and it's where i want it to be right this knob right here is super important this regulates your pressure of how hard you're pressing your book, okay? So this 
will allow, you'll, you'll actually see this go up. This will allow it to go up. You see how it's going up right now? And then it allows it to go down, right? And then what all this is really doing, you can see how it's going down too. All this is doing is that it's just putting tension. It's, it's, a, it, it's, it's a tension rod that's gonna put tension on these springs to compress the book down, okay? So we want this to be, people put it right at 90 degrees, so it comes out like an L at a 90. I like to keep mine up just a little bit, just a degree higher than 90, right? Like, and what it does is, is I find if you press a book too hard, you can cause the pages to stick together, especially in the newer books, um, they have a tendency of sticking. So what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that, and, and we're ready now, our heat is where it wants to be, okay? So if, if we press it too hard, the pages will stick together and we don't want that. So we don't wanna do a hard press on it, right? We're not the Incredible Hulk here. We don't wanna smash it. We wanna gently just kind of press it, right? Relax it, the heat and the press is gonna relax the book and relax the pages. The temperature will continue to go up, um, but it won't exceed a certain amount of time. If you look right, let's see if I can block out this light real quick. See how there it says 204 and it says one. So you can set your, your, your time and you just hit play or start. Now it's ready to go. In my opinion, I do that just so that I, I know my temperature set, everything's good to go, and we're ready to press, start pressing this book. So what I'll do here now, again, I'm holding with my left hand, and I'm just, pre I'm just, I'm just allowing this to get pressed down, okay? That book is set. Once that book goes, what I'll do here is I'll hit start, and I'm on a 20 minute time. Once this hits 20 minutes, we'll come back. I'll show you how to flip the book and we'll continue to uh, press out this book. All right, guys, we're just about ready on our press. We have about three seconds left. All right, and that's it. So then now that our time is up, we have our 20 minute press on the back side of the book. Again, we're not going to slam it open, right? We're going to grab it here and we're going to pick it up gently. And we're just going to kind of lift it up all the way. And we're going to, I like to kind of hold it so that the whole machine doesn't move. Maybe it's me being a little paranoid, but I like to get it all out of the way, right? Then we're going to take off layer of paper off. Now this book's going to be hot. I'll tell you right now that this book will be definitely warm. Sometimes they come out really warm and they're a little hard to handle. But you can kind of tell it's already kind of like sticking a little bit. So what we want is to be very gentle because it's in a very gentle state right now because it's super soft. Again, having that, having that rough side up makes that come out way easier. So we're going to make sure we kind of keep the book in the same spot. We're going to flip the book and we're going to slide it. But remember, we have to remove this so that our staples don't get caught in and get pressed and, and have indents in the front of the book. That would just make the book way more unappealing. Again, nice and tight. We are gonna go to the front page like we did the back. You can see how it's kind of already sticking. And we're gonna slide this in, repeat the same exact process that we did on the back side of the book. There we go. All right, there's, I know what, I just moved it. I felt myself move it. So let me go ahead and readjust that real quick. Especially with it being in front of the book. I'm always a little paranoid when it's in front of the book too, because it's a, you know, obviously it's the front of the book, so. All right, so there's that. Move it in a little bit. There we go. Again, we're checking to make sure that everything's lined up properly and accordingly. I like to get my timer ready to go. Let's see, get my timer ready to go to where we're ready for uh, 20 minutes. And then what we'll do here is we'll go like this and we'll smash this down. Again, we're gonna do another 20 minutes. I'm gonna hit start. And then once this 20 minutes is over, all we're gonna do is we're gonna come back, we're gonna turn off the machine, and we're gonna leave it. 
just like this for at least eight hours. I like to do an eight hour press on all of my books. Some people like to do 24 hours. Some people like to do 12 hours to each their own, right? But for me, I do an eight hour press. It kind of speeds things up. I can do one like at seven o'clock at night. Then I can wake up at six o'clock in the morning and I can do it and I can get another book started and have that run all day. So when I come home from work, I can pull that, that one out because it's had an eight hour press on it. So I'm technically doing two books a day is kind of my, on one machine, right? That's kind of my, my pattern on all of this. So again, once that 20 minutes is up, we'll come back, we'll just turn it off and we'll let it sit for about eight hours. All right, here we are coming into the final seconds of the front press. And then, ba-dam. Now once that has stopped, all we're gonna do now is we're just going to turn off the machine and we're gonna let everything sit for at least eight hours. And once the eight hours is up, our press will be complete. I will open it up. I will show you the results. And you guys can kind of gauge for yourself how well it came out or not. All right, guys, welcome back. We are now gonna take out our comic from our press machine. It has been in here for about 10 hours. Um, like I said, I normally have to do at least eight hours. Um, I would say no more than 12, because I feel like after 12, you're not really getting a full, I mean, at that point, I feel like you're getting a peak based on my experience. Um, after 12, it's just, the results are already there. So, um, again, we're gonna grab it by the handle and we're gonna pick it up slowly, right? We're not gonna slam it open. Right, we're going to do it nice and slow, and we're going to bring it up nice and slow, and we're going to turn and get out of the way. So now, what I like to do is I like to take, kind of take this off to the side, and I, I just want to make sure that everything I do at this point on is just really smooth, the book is done, and just kind of make everything nice and neat. Again, my hands are clean. They were washed before I, before I pulled it out each time. Again, this is going to come out, still looks super clean. Now, sometimes uh, the book itself will be mm, a little stiff, right? And that's pretty common. So what I like to do is almost like to crack it. And that's probably because I run my press a little bit hotter, but it also makes the book a lot stiffer. And then after I, once I kind of go through the whole book and kind of crack it a little bit here and there, I like to kind of flip each page and just kind of get each page. You can tell as it's pulling it away, it's not pulling the ink. I know it sounds scary, but it's not. Pages will stick together. There's no ink transfer. You see, it's not scary. Still going along, still going along. So each page will get completely flipped through. So that way there's no tackiness, there's no stickiness there's nothing on these pages at all that's going to affect the ink the picture and everything else remember it's a process that's meant to be taken slowly it's not a rush process so we're just kind of flipping through and making sure that each page is nice And separated as you get towards the end of the candy a little heavy so you don't want to obviously drop your nice clean press book so I can keep going okay so now we're at the very end that's all my my pages unstuck so I'm gonna set it right there and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this all out of the way and I'm gonna show you the actual end result end result of the actual book now okay guys so here is our end result to the pressing of Venom Lethal Protector number four. And I got to say, the results are amazing. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and tilt the book back, book up and you can kind of see how clean this press came out. I mean, that is pretty, pretty darn good if you ask me. That, that is one clean, see if I can get it not to slide. That's because it's so nice and clean and wants to slide off the board. That is one clean press. Now, you will see that right, right there, uh, there's a little spine tick right here. And unfortunately, that has to do with because the tick actually breaks color. But look how clean it came out. I mean, I'm, I even believe that when you press it, it even cleans it as well. 
you can see our windows are still a little bit dirty but not not too bad i mean like i said again it is what it is but as far as the white goes compared to what it was before i mean this book has made a huge jump again some minor spine ticks inside the book it's, itself but that's i mean that's to be expected again i got this from uh, a, a little um store here locally that was just mainly an antique store it wasn't a, a, a comic book store it wasn't anything to brag about it wasn't an lcs or anything it was literally something that was in a little bin so for it to be come out this clean and for it to you know have this this finish on it i mean that's just that is really really nice that is extremely nice so that is how we do our pressing or how I do my pressing. Again, I know I'm probably going to get a lot of critics. A lot of people are going to have their different views on it. And that, that's great. That's fine. Um, everyone to each their own. I just know that after doing this multiple, for multiple, multiple books and sending them into CGC, I've had phenomenal results. So I really hope. Oh, you know, before I leave, also, what normally what I do also is that when I put it back in the bag and board, I'll actually pack this. I haven't done it yet, but I'll put an, I'll put like five backers in here, five or six backers. And what that does is it kind of makes the actual bag itself, you know, fuller. So when you slide the comic in it, it kind of keeps it tight. It, it's not loose like this. By putting more backer boards in here and then sliding the comic in last, it kind of holds it tighter. So it, it kind of keeps it more of a shrink wrap finish than a, than a loose bag finish. So Again, that's something I do with all my press books. <laughs> I got it for five bucks, so I can't complain there. And that's that's pretty much the end result of this press. So I really hope this helps you guys. Uh, remember to subscribe to the channel, like this video, uh, comment. I'll be more than happy to respond to any questions you guys may have. And stay tuned. I'm going to have way more content in the future as far as unboxing, maybe more pressing videos and cleaning videos. So thanks again, guys. Take it easy.